Hi friends. I am back with a video that will show you the easiest way of making joints for boxes, drawers, and for whatever else you want to show off your woodworking prowess. My woodworking tools are packed away so I shall have to impress you with stick pictures. Sometimes, what I term line drawing works better than photos in the sense that the relation between different parts becomes clearer. Enjoy. To start with we shall use four boards which, for convenience, will be 8 cm wide. The height does not matter, I shall leave this to be your choice, but do keep the height common for all four boards. As you are getting your boards together do get also a leftover board which you will eventually use as a backing board or push board to push your four boards toward the router bit, your fingers are valuable so this push board will keep them away from the spinning router bit. The router bit is a straight cutter router bit and its diameter is 1 cm. The arrangement of the router table, its fence the router bit and the four identical wood boards are shown in the above diagram. The push board is also shown. What follows is the plan view arrangement of the four boards and of the backing board. The router bit is a straight cutter bit and its diameter is 1 cm. The boards and the backing board are arranged perpendicular to the fence. At this point in time arrange your fence so the first centimeter of the width of the boards is in line with the router bit. This is clearly shown in the plan view above. Here I am also showing you a side view of the arrangement of the boards. Make sure that as you advance the backing board all four boards have been completely cut, in other words advance the backing board to the point that the router bit enters it completely. This will ensure that all four boards are fully cut. Here we see a diagram of how we place our boards with their left sides flush with the fence in order to make the first joint. This will be in centimeter number 8. This will be the joint furthest away from the fence. The next step entails placing a spacer, with a width of 2 centimeters, between the left sides of the boards and the fence. This will place centimeter number 6 in way of the router bit in order to create our next joint. The finger at centimeter number 7 is left intact. The next step entails placing two spacers, with a width of 2 centimeters each, between the left sides of the boards and the fence. This will place centimeter number 4 in way of the router bit in order to create our next joint at centimeter number 4. The finger at centimeter number 5 is left intact. Next we place three spacers, with a width of 2 centimeters each, between the left sides of the boards and the fence. This will place centimeter number 2 in way of the router bit in order to create our next joint at centimeter number 2. The finger at centimeter number 3 is left intact. You must always ensure that the backing board and the four boards remain vertical to the fence. This is important as it makes certain that each joint and each finger have a width of 1 centimeter. During each cut the four boards must be tightly located behind one another. Following this placement four identical fingers and four identical joints will be cut on each board. We have now reached the point of having completed the cuts at the base of our boards. The diagram above shows the four boards and the joints and fingers we created. Now we shall rotate, or flip vertically, our boards 180 degrees so that the joints and fingers already cut are at the upper parts or tops of the boards. We shall repeat the previous process, but this time we shall start with a spacer of 1 cm width in place, against the fence. Here we see the four boards after we have flipped them vertically. We shall shift the fence so that the router bit is in line with centimeter number 7. That will be our first cut. We shall now place a spacer of 1 cm width between the boards and the fence so that the router bit makes its first cut on the 7th cm from the left. The diagram above demonstrates this arrangement. The next step entails placing a spacer of 2 cm width, in addition to the spacer of 1 cm width. The spacers are placed between the boards and the fence so that the router bit makes its second cut on centimeter number 5 from the left. The diagram above demonstrates this arrangement.
The next step entails placing an additional spacer of 2 cm width in addition to the spacer of 2 cm width, and to the spacer of 1 cm width. The spacers are placed between the boards and the fence so that the router bit makes its third cut on cm number 3 from the left. The diagram above demonstrates this arrangement. The final step entails placing a spacer of 2 cm width in addition to the two spacers of 2 cm width, and to the spacer of 1 cm width. The spacers are placed between the boards and the fence so that the router bit makes its fourth cut on cm number 1 from the left. The diagram above demonstrates this arrangement. With a relatively small effort the end result is a continuous repeating template. The front board connects directly with the right side board and this directly connects with the back board whilst the latter directly connects with the left side board. The free end of the left side board, the one on the right side as viewed above, i.e. line YY, seamlessly connects with the free end, the one on the left side as viewed above, i.e. line XX, of the front. It can also be seen that the height and the width of each board may be changed in accordance with one's requirements, provided that the height remains the same. The width of each board may be changed to one's requirements, provided that the width of the front and the back are maintained equal. This requirement also applies to the width of the right side and to the width of the left side. This is a very versatile and easy way of setting the boards up and making the cuts with the router. As an extra bonus one may maintain the thickness of the four boards at 1 cm and so have very little sanding to do for the final box shape. Just as a reminder, the router bit used throughout this exercise has a diameter of 1 cm. The position of the boards, relative to the location of the router bit, is regulated by appropriately moving the fence and by adjusting the number and width of the spacers used. In some places I use the words backing board and in others I use the words pusher board. They mean the same thing. To fit a base for your box or drawer make a cut with a router bit that has a diameter equal to the thickness of the plywood, or other material that you are going to use, that you are going to use. Cut with the router bit along the red lines shown above. If you are building a box and you want to make a cover use a similar approach. friends. I wanted to say a big thank you to all of you who subscribe to my channel. It is such a great feeling to see a new subscriber appearing in my horizon. Mine is a friendly and easy going channel so I do appreciate it when you make contact and offer a comment. After all this is the fun part of life, I mean the being together in some form or another. We shall be together soon again but in the meantime I promise to keep in touch with regard to questions or comments you may have. Once again thank you for your support and for following my channel.